Well, let's speak to one of the figures that's been at the very top levels of Labour politics in recent years. Uh, Labour MP, former Shadow Justice Secretary Richard Burgeon. Welcome to the show, sir. How are you doing, Mark? You OK? Really good. Lovely to have you on the show and any of our listeners on DAB will hear you. And if you're watching us on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, you can see uh, Mr. Burgeon as well. Now, uh, Richard, we know time um, is of the essence. Uh, what do you think went wrong in December 2019? Well, I think fundamentally the position we took on Brexit ended up being a, a disaster. If you look at the seats we lost in 2019, most of them were seats that voted to leave the EU in the 2016 uh, EU referendum. So I think the major problem we had at the last general election was our policy shift between the 2017 general election, where we nearly won, and the 2019 general election, where we got smashed. And I think that fed into distrust as well, because when people were looking at our manifesto policies, people were saying things like, well, how can we trust you to deliver these policies when you said you'd uh, sort out Brexit and respect the outcome of the referendum, and they didn't think we were. But the report that's come out today mm. also details not just issues in relation to the 2019 general election, but long-term issues for Labour uh, in Scotland uh, and in our northern uh, communities as well. So it's not just short-term issues that the report talks about, but also issues which have been problems for our party for a long time, and all, of course, of which need sorting out. Now, one of the direct quotations, which is quite damning from this report, is that a toxic culture uh, led partly to this defeat. Notwithstanding Brexit, uh, we're told Labour has a mountain to climb uh, because of a period of dysfunctionality, toxicity and drift within the party's election fighting machine. Um, did you witness that when you were in post uh, in the shadow cabinet? Well, I think anybody who's taken a close interest in Labour politics in recent years uh, will have seen the way that much of the Parliamentary Labour Party, after the EU referendum in 2016, turned a Conservative crisis, because Cameron was on his way out after that EU referendum result, it turned a Conservative crisis into a Labour crisis. And so there, were, there was what amounted to, in advance of the 2017 general election at least, uh, sabotage from uh, many members of the Parliamentary Labour Party, sadly. And then more recently, we've seen the leaked report, which has allegations in it that um, some of the top unelected officials within the Labour Party as well were seeking to sabotage uh, our election prospects in 2017. And I think that fed in to people's general perception of the Labour Party, because I think it is correct when people say that the public doesn't like a disunited party. And a disunity, and the way that some people, both elected and unelected, couldn't seem to bring themselves to accept the fact that Jeremy Corbyn had the right to lead our party, uh, I think that really fed into people's idea that Labour was a disunited party. And if people think a party is disunited, then they're less likely to think they're going to do a good job uh, of bringing the country together uh, and uh, governing in the interests of the majority in our country. Now, we've said on this programme that the Labour Party needs to be restored as a, a powerful, persuasive political force. That's what we need in a healthy democracy. The two iconic parties that have more or less governed this nation for a century, the Conservative Party and the Labour Party. Um, I wonder whether Labour delays its recovery if it doesn't focus on a very high spending manifesto at a time when so many of potential Labour voters um, have had to carefully watch the pounds and pennies. I'm just worried, uh, Richard, whether this focus on Brexit um, is a slight distraction away from another key issue, which is a manifesto that people just didn't think was realistic. I think the issue of Brexit and people not believing that we would deliver some of the policies in our manifesto were interlinked for the reasons I said earlier. People lost trust with us because they thought we'd changed our position on Brexit and weren't honouring our word. But also, to uh, but Richard, I'd, I'd, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I think they were worried that you would do some of those policies in the manifesto, which would have cost hundreds of billions of pounds. You know, did, did the nation really need all of those nationalisations, especially now when you look at a pandemic, how that extra spending power has come in very useful? I think that going forward, it would be a big mistake for our party to draw the conclusion that we lost the 2019 uh, general election so badly because we had uh, re um, reforming, redistributive um, policies, socialist left policies, and uh, for supporting 
uh, public ownership. I think in the economic crisis that sadly I believe is on its way, mm. hot on the heels of this awful public health crisis, I think those kind of big policies of state intervention uh, to protect public services and protect the, the living standards of working class people are going to become more and more necessary. Let's just take two examples. Uh, our policy in the manifesto of a national care service, I think more and more people are realising that's necessary when we look at the way the coronavirus crisis has shone a light on the inadequate uh, care provision that our privatised care system is providing. And also the broadband policy, free high speed broadband, which was very much mocked during and after the general election. I think there's a developing consensus with everybody, so many more people working from home, that that's going to be really something which needs to play an important uh, role uh, going forward. So I actually think it would be a mistake to think in a period of economic crisis, which Shadley, I believe, is on its way, a period of economic crisis that many experts say is likely to be greater than that of the banking crisis. Yeah. I think some of these big radical reforming policies will be back on the agenda and will be the kind of solutions people need in order to, to protect their living standards and protect their public services. Now, Richard, with the clock against us, I'm going to do that cheeky government press briefing trick of asking you two questions in one, um, if that's all right with you. First of all, you're a very talented guy. Why are you not in the shadow cabinet? And our text poll of the day is to our audience whether the Labour Party should become new Labour again. It's not a scientific poll, but at the moment, 56% of our audience say it should. So what's your uh, your answer to those two questions? Well, Keir wanted uh, a new team as he be when he became uh, leader of the Labour Party, and that's quite right that uh, he puts a team together, a fresh team, when you get a, a new leader. So I'm proud to be serving Labour as a Labour MP, proposing my ideas um, as well. And I'm going to work as hard as I can to get Keir Starmer into number 10 Downing Street because we do need a Labour government. But before that, we can't wait until next general election to fight back against some of these Conservative policies. And we need to push U-turns uh, again and achieve U-turns on further things. In terms of the question of whether or not we should return to new Labour, new Labour in many ways was correct uh, for the time in which it operated. But it's around a quarter of a century ago now, and solutions even that worked in the mid-90s wouldn't work now. We're in a different economic situation, a different political situation. Countries changed in many ways. One of the lessons of New Labour, they used to say, modernise or die. So I think going back to the politics of 25 years ago would be a mistake. We're entering a period of an economic crisis. We're entering a period where I think big state intervention on the side of the vast majority of people is going to be necessary. Some people would call that socialist politics. And I certainly think that many of the policies in the 2017 and 29, and uh, 2017 and 2019 yeah. manifesto will play an important role in providing solutions people need ahead. So I say forward, not back. The biggest political name speak to talk radio. Richard Burgeon, deeply grateful for your time. I look forward to our next encounter. Labour MP, former Shadow Justice Secretary.